Hey everybody, this is Claire and this is Small Joyful Things. As always, I go to thrift stores or I go to estate sales or sometimes I buy things from Craigslist and I look for things that either will tell me a story or that just appeal to me in some way or that I think will just, will, you know, will be interesting. And I try to find as much as I can about them and then tell you guys about them. So here's what I've got today. I'm glad to say this, I hope this actually sparkles as much on camera as it does like in, in real life. I don't think you get the kind of the same effect, I don't think. Um, <laughs> this is obviously cut crystal. Uh, the inside is completely smooth. It is cut on the other side and it is quite rough. <laughs> and maybe you can see it a little if I just turn to the light and just let it kind of do its thing. Now, before you get excited, this is not a brilliant American Brilliant cut, which I was so disappointed by. But anyway, let's measure it up. It is, let's say about, let's say six and a quarter inches across, the widest point. And I have to say, incredibly difficult to measure it, uh, the height of it, but we'll have a go. Can I do this with only with my hands? Okay, I'm gonna say it is about an inch and a quarter high, and I'm not gonna try any harder than that because I may drop it. And God knows I've broken enough things on camera at this point. Okay, so like basically what we could say about this, I, I bought this in a thrift store, I paid about four dollars for it, and this was part of actually a larger display that, that the particular thrift store had out. They had a lot of this kind of cut crystal or pressed crystal in this style, and there was of all the pieces that were there. This was the only one that I picked up and thought, this is quality. And to be honest, I, I kind of wasn't 100% sure if it was ABP, you know, Amer American Brilliant Period or American Brilliant Cut. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was that type of glass. I just picked it up and thought, this is good stuff. So chances are maybe it is. And at that particular day, I left my black light at home <laughs> and I really should have brought it with me and checked it because have it here. If I just turn the light off for a second so it goes dark. Yeah. You don't really see much of this on camera I'm afraid. Uh, maybe it's not showing up here. There is no green glow. Unfortunately, now I'm just going to turn my light back on. There. Let's try this again. Maybe it'll be better under this light. Nope. Just shows up blue. Very, very unhelpful. So what, what you can basically see, not on the camera, but if I'm just looking at it here, the glow is pink. And that is really unfortunate because that essentially means that it's probably not American Brilliant Cut or American Brilliant Period. It's not an antique, it's not 100 years old, anything like that. Because if it was real ABP glass, it would probably glow lime green. And again, I've done another video on this on a, a sugar and creamer set that I got that definitely is ABP. And when I put the, the black light on that, it had the correct green, like lime green glow. That's not uranium glow. It's uh, to do with the actual content in the glass itself. The thing that they used for actually making it, um, making it clear, I can't remember which which element it is. Like back then, they were using they were using something else in order to make the glass clear. And once they got to kind of you know the early twentieth century and they stopped making kind of AB ABP glass to the, qual the level of quality that they had it, um, they started using other other compounds in order to make the glass clear. And the the stuff they they, they use the modern stuff they use does not fluoresce green under UV light. It doesn't have that kind of pale, but that pale lime green color. The pink and purples are modern glass. This is going to be from the 1970s or later, which is, you know, unfortunate for me. Um, I was really hoping I had another piece of ABV glass, because especially one that's actually very fine quality. And this definitely, like, even though it's not an antique, it is very exceptional quality. One of the things that I, I judge on if I pick up a piece of glass like that is like, what is the quality of the cuts? and like what's the quality of the finish and the thing that really struck me about this is that normally i'm able to see the the, the, the grind lines as in when i when i'm looking at the edge of these large cuts 
uh, even, you know, with my with the naked eye, I've kind of gotten used to kind of seeing what it looks like if you actually see uh, the, the, the very faint kind of parallel lines that come from using a diamond cutting heel, the, what you'd use post-World War II. And obviously, if your heel doesn't have that, it doesn't have that, it's completely smooth because they would have used like, you know, stone cutting wheels and then smooth, and then they'd, uh, they'd, they'd use like stone or they'd use like wood or whatever to smooth it off and produces a much smoother finish. And if I'm going to try and show you guys here, these cuts just happen to be particularly nice and smooth. And although the glass itself kind of makes me think it's definitely vintage, maybe 1970s or later, I think it was actually, it would have maybe been cut on a diamond cutting wheel, but they went down afterwards and smoothed it out. They did extra finishing on it to kind of, to improve the quality. And the the nice thing about it is that each one of these cuts, the many, many, many cuts that you see, even the tiny little ones there, they're all done by hand. Literally all of them. <laughs> like, in, I'm pretty sure that you can't do this kind of cutting with a machine anyway. It's like, how would you even do that? But this this is definitely, I think this has definitely been done by hand. There is the very slight uh, imperfection, like the slight unevenness. Although it is incredibly even, it's not... So even, it's not perfectly even to suggest that it's been done by a computer with who, that's, you know, capable of that kind of precision. No, it's been done by a person. You can even see where, where the lines have just kind of, you can see where the, the cuts have crossed over each other as they were actually doing them. And it really is, like, that that kind of stuff is really, is really something special, especially at the level of detail that this is. This is tiny. <laughs> Again, it's only six inches across. That's a lot of detail. Now, the nice thing about the pattern is that they put a lot of work into these patterns. There is so much going on here. If you actually want to take a read up of what kind of patterns were show up in in cut crystal, like there's a lot of them and there's every possible variation of them. What we've got here is if I try and get I'm gonna try and get close. So this piece here would be a hob star, as far as I know. The bit in the center is a Bristol star, which is kind of a variation on that. Then we've got, uh, let's see, let's see if I can do this. Then we've got these little pieces in the corner here. And as far as I can tell, that's, that's, uh, that's Daisy and Button. And then we've obviously just got the plain, the plain crisscrosses here, which is just, you know, crisscross lines. And then we have these here, which is a strawberry. And then obviously we've got the saw too that we're on the edge. So, there is a lot going on. Somebody put an awful lot of work into this. This is not like when I see a lot of these kind of dishes that are just look very fairly slapdash, I want to say. It's like they put a few kind of decorative cuts in and they just kind of call it a day. Or even it'll be like a pressed blank and they'll do just a couple of extra cuts to give it a little bit more detail and then just that's the end of it, you know. It's usually fairly obvious. This is not that. This is someone literally had like a bowl in this kind of vague shape and every single piece of detail you see here was cut out by hand. So, so that's something. Vintage, not antique. Definitely someone put a lot of time and effort into this. And that's probably the thing that actually convinced me. Because obviously, if you're looking at stuff in thrift stores, you want to decide if something is legit, it has to convince you that it's got quality. It can't just be something that, that looks half-assed. This is not half-assed. <laughs> now, the other question would be like, what is it actually worth? And the thing about cut glass is that it's clear glass still. It hasn't been popular for a while. <laughs> um, I've heard Dr. Dr. Laurie, Dr. Laurie Verderame, so an, acting, an antiques appraiser who, who I, I follow quite a lot, and she's on YouTube, and I'll put a link in the description if, you, if you're curious about her. She said a few times that American Brilliant Cut is going to come back. The market for it's been very kind of low for the last, like, I think 10, 20 years. It used to be super, super popular, and it used to sell for a ridiculous amount of money. And then the market just kind of went nowhere. Because again, obviously taste change, but she she's of the opinion that it's going to come back and this kind of stuff is going to start becoming more popular. I don't really know. <laughs> oh, and for the record, this is quite heavy. Normally a lot of the stuff is incredibly light. This thing has got weight to it. It may be lead crystal. I'm not 100% sure. Well, you know, leave the jury out on that one. But anyway, if we're taking a look at... If we're taking a look at YouTube... I took a quick look to see exactly what's, like, what essentially what's selling, you know? And I'm looking at just vintage cut crystal and then with a hop star design or something similar. 
And you can see that there are a lot of different pieces, especially the decanters that would have sold for incredibly good money. The only problem is, is that this is only in like the last three months, the last 90 days. This is all that has sold on eBay. And it's only things that are either very unusual or antique, vintage, ABP, Berlin cut, you know, <laughs> stuff that's, you know, obviously, obviously old and valuable. Now, if you actually just take a look, there is 147 results for just that. Yeah, uh, yeah, in different types and you know, different kind of variations of it and everything. So there you have it. I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure if that market's going to come back. But you never know. This is still fairly nice. I bought it for four dollars. I'm probably going to put it up on eBay and maybe sell it for fifteen or twenty. Yeah, I think I still think it's worth it because you know. I like the quality and I, I, I'm i always in favor of stuff that has that has clearly been made with care and attention. So this is my small joyful thing for today. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Bye bye.